If making people wait for an update was an Olympic sport, Austria would bring back gold every single year. This is the new Noctua NF812X25G2, the supposed upgrade to the original best overall fan of the last decade. However, it's complicated. It is hella complicated. But before we get to my personal hellhood, which is going to be the benchmark section, let's start at the beginning. There are three versions of this fan. The regular NF-A12X25G2 PWM, the one which is going to be the main protagonist of today's video. A G2 LS PWM, one where they crippled the speed even further, allowing it to only spin at up to 1100 RPM. And the NF-A12X25G2 PWM SX2 PP, yet that's still the correct pronunciation. Which is a double pack containing everything twice, but where each of the fans is offset by the original max speed by about 50. Because as we've learned with the recent release of the NF-A14X25G2, running multiple of these in a, a push-pull configuration or a side of each other can create unwanted noise if they spin at a very very similar speed. Hence offsetting the two won't performance by that much or one is a bit better the other one is a bit worse but it will eliminate some of the unwanted noise be it just a fraction of it with each of these regular editions you will get a fan including the impeller protector as well as a tiny accessories box containing a 30 centimeter extension a one to two pwm splitter nice that they do include these even with the single edition a low speed adapter which throttles the speed down to 1500 as well as a bag of screws noxious rubber anti-vibration mounts and the anti-vibration gasket for radiator applications funnily enough that absolutely over the top sheet explaining the amount of torque you're allowed to use on the fans is gone. The one which was present on the A14 G2 seems like the smaller form factor doesn't cause as much trouble if you're installing the fan with power tool. Yeah, this is a joke. P please don't do that. But back to the fan. The new version of the A12X25 is basically a smaller scale version of the G2 A14. We got the exact same impeller with a double band, just smaller. We still got nine wings. They are now just less spaced out thanks to the size. We got the same winglets, just smaller. We got the exact same central fan hub with these additional grooves because over-engineering never ends. And as far as I can see, what's inside the central hub is also identical to the A14 G2. We still got that ETA perf motor with NEFD6 PWM IC, which sounds super mega complicated, but it's just Doctor's way of saying we made the motor even better, even quieter. Funnily enough, the Supra Torque feature, the thing that boosts power a bit to keep up with high resistances like radiators for example yeah that's kind of gone not mentioned anywhere on the box but i think they just ran out of space to print it because if you smack the thing against a solid surface to tank it the speed just crawls back up so yeah i, I think supra torque is still there other than that, we got the same changes we had before. No more visible reinforced motor hub, the impeller is still made out of Sterex LCP and the tip clearance seems to have become smaller. Not by a lot and officially both the new A14 and the, the old one are supposed to have 0.5 millimeters of tip clearance between the frame and the tip. But uh, by the looks of it and by using like a piece of paper, it seems like it's marginally smaller now. Changes aside for a minute, it's still a Noctua fan and we still got the Noctua level 3. Each corner still got the pre-installed rubber pieces. The fan still comes in the Noctua mm, brown with less brown color scheme. We still got the 20 centimeter long PWM cable with a nice feeling sleeve, which still randomly ends a centimeter before the fan begins, which just annoys me way more than it should have. It, it's uh, I hate visible like mustard and ketchup cables. And on the frame, it's still the exact same thing we had before. Stepped inlet design and the inner surface microstructure. So let's talk stats. At max, the A12X25G2 is supposed to spin at up to 1800 RPM whilst pushing up to 63.1 CFM at up to 3.14 millimeters of H2O. And if you compare that to the original A12X25, that's just fractionally more CFM at quite a bit more static pressure. However, something I didn't quite expect before starting this review, the new one is spinning at only 1800 RPM, which is 200 RPM less than the original one. That's 10%. And with that introduction, let's talk benchmark. First up is our case simulator, where we use two fans to recycle the air within the box and measure the performance using a passive Noxia P1 in the middle. At first we start off at full speed and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps to get a noise to performance curve. Spinning at max, uh, 
uh, yeah, the G2 didn't do too well. At 43.8 degrees C above ambient, it's not a bad fan, don't get me wrong, it still outperforms the P12, which I usually use as like a minimum bore for any fan, but it was outperformed by the original A12X25. It may be just like a margin of error away, but it isn't really what I was expecting. And thus began my quest to find out what the hell is going on, and it's kinda Noxia's own fault. Kinda. Here you can see the mini tool I used to calculate the temperatures coming out of the benchmark machine. Yes, I, I wrote magic there, leave me alone. This thing synchronizes the results from the benchmark machine with the readings from the amb ambient air temperature sensors. My, my, uh, it's like, a, it's, it's an amp probe, TD, whatever. And as you can see, the new A12X25 G2 self-reports as expected, 1800 RPM plus minus 15. For my original A12X25, however, yeah, that's like 120, 130 RPM over spec. And I checked every single one of my A12X25s that I own. Every one is like at least 100, 120 RPM over spec. Which means that what was supposed to be a 200 RPM slower spinning fan now has become a 330 RPM slower spinning fan, which will be reflected on the max performance graph. That said, I am under the impression that Noctua never intended for the A12X25 G2 to be the outperforming upgrade. I think what they aim for is optimizing the noise and static pressure with a focus on, on harder environments like radiators and heat sinks. Welcome this guy. This is an ongoing project which I am still working on. It's not complete. I haven't calibrated anything. Everything still needs to be sanded down, sprayed to, to minimize restrictions. So do not take these values as an absolute measurement. Oh, I, I never said what it is. It's a anemometer. It's an airflow measuring device squeezed into two funnels to allow me to measure the CFM pushed or pulled by a fan. Basically a way for me to measure raw CFM of every fan without building some random ass wooden box. And what I did with this thing is measure the amount of air pulled through the anemometer by both the new and old A12X25. And who would have thought they are within margin of error. What you can see here are the two lines representing the amount of CFM per 10% PWM steps, so basically 100, 90, 80 and so on. Again, do not take these values as absolute. Everything could be off, offset by 10 for, for what I know. But what we can do is use the machine right now and compare two fans, the new and the old A12. And who would have thought they both end up at an equal amount of air at max. Just don't forget that one of these is spinning at 2130 RPM and the other one at 1800. And, and by the way, the value is 51.3 and 51.4 CFM. Uh, 51.4 for the old one. And here the according bar graph, just to show Noxia how nice it is to use non-zero starting graphs to illustrate a point. Anyway, this doesn't say a lot other than both fans pull the same amount at max and slowly drip towards zero. Not a lot of information until we map the values with the dB meter. And here we start seeing something useful. X-axis is still CFM and the Y has now become the noise in dB at one meter distance. And here we start seeing where the differences are because although both are pushing the same amount of air, the new one does so a tiny whiny bit quieter at max. Slowing everything down, they cross path, making the old one the leader by an even smaller amount for a moment, up until about 60% speed, but the original one hits noise floor fractionally quicker. And now you might ask, why the hell did I partially introduce a halfway finished machine into one of the most exciting reviews of the year? Because I was looking for an explanation for this. This is the noise to performance graph using the K-Simulator. We got the new A12, the old one, the A14 for good reference, a random ID cooling fan, a Corsair fan, and the Be Quiet Silent Wing Pro 4. First of all, all the reference fans end up significantly louder and significantly colder, but we are looking at the ratio between the noise and performance, which usually is, is a Noxia's game. The thing is just, at the very max, the new one had a minimally better ratio, but as soon as you lowered the speed, it fell behind the old A12 and stayed there for the entire run or until the fans hit noise floor, which is almost the exact same behavior we had here. 
just that here the left bottom corner is the place everybody wants to be. But a few minutes ago I said I believe that Noxia created this fan with the intent to make it quieter and perform better under harder environments. Which is why I dragged my trusty old U12A out of its grave and took it for another spin. This time using the PPA and PPB version of the G2. After all that's exactly why they exist. Of course I re-ran the U12A first with the original fans to test if everything is still as it is supposed to be and everything is still alright. The margin of error was like 0.3. So we are good. And whilst cooling down our Intel 250W benchmark machine for CPU coolers, the new G2 upgraded U12A managed to get the temperature down from 66.2 degrees C above ambient to 64.3, a 1.9 degrees C difference, thanks to the now more optimized for static pressure design, which, yay, we, we know what this fan is for. The corresponding noise to performance graph, yeah, I do love my noise to performance graphs, well, that looks even more amazing. At max, the upgraded PPA and PPB fans are marginally quieter, but significantly better. And that difference may become slowly smaller and smaller, but it never changes the fact that using the upgraded fans on this pretty old cooler creates something significantly better. Actually, my little upgrade created something that outperforms the original D15. Just, just saying. But the pendulum does swing back a tiny bit. Because whilst testing our radiator, my original A12X25 won again. This time the new one kept the water at 11.9 degrees C above ambient, 0.3 degrees C hotter than what the original A12X25 did. But here again, don't forget that my A12X25, the, the G1, are still spinning 130 RPM faster than they should have been, so 330 RPM faster than this one, and that, that's like a brutal difference. And the corresponding noise to performance graph slightly relativizes this again. Sure, the original one can push more through the red at max, with that speed difference, of course it does, but if you normalize that down to the max noise created by the G2, it is slightly better. And going down from there, the difference might become smaller, marginally even. But yeah, the G2 is better on red. That was one hell of a benchmark section. And before I give any sort of opinion, here are some noise samples of the G2 versus the G1. Because with the new generation Nokia fans, it's not about how much dB the dB meter displays. It's also how high or low pitch the whole thing is how you prefer the sound, what annoys you, because they sound so much different and I don't believe using solely a dB meter creates a, uh, a full picture. So the NF-A12X25 G2 and unfortunately I gotta admit that I came into this review with a slightly wrong expectation. Like I thought this is going to be a, a slam dunk, bad on cases, bad on rats, bad on heatsink, basically a new best performing fan. But it's just not about that. The, the G2 is about optimizing, optimizing the noise profile, or, or let's put it differently. The G2 is about getting the RPM down and the noise down without negatively affecting the performance. And if that was the goal, Nokia did it. Take the raw CFM test. Ignoring the noise and everything else, the G2 performed plus minus 0.1 CFM like the 330 RPM quicker G1. And if you add noise to that, the G2 does this quieter and that's kind of an achievement. That said, I also believe that the upgrade is not an upgrade if you're looking for uh, case fans. 
neither on my simulator nor on the animometer, which is like the rawest I can go, did I find any indication that once the restriction is low enough that you gain anything. So I don't think you should rip out your existing A12X25s out of your case and expect a gigantic leap in performance. The noise profile changes and it is marginally better at a very specific fan speed and then it just loses. Now for heat sinks and radiators, very different story. On rats, we saw a slight improvement, a positive one, but the biggest leap was what we saw on the U12A. Like that's an entirely different cooler. And I don't want to give Nokia stupid ideas, but they could actually just take the existing ones, switch out the fans and boom, new, new cooler, sell it for 200 euros, it's Nokia. So is it the best fan in existence? No, no. To fit my description of best you would need to, to top off the charts and i have dozens of graphs showing how many fans there are which are way better but i don't think that was nokia's point these are spinning at 1800 rpm they are not fast fans i think the point was to make a very quiet fan that does not suck and as far as radiators and especially heat sinks are concerned nokia did it especially on heat sinks the only thing i am kind of astonished by are the no restriction use cases like i expected this to outperform the original a12 on cases not by a lot but i still did but it just didn't it does sound differently and that may or may, may not be positive for your own personal preference but like for performance overall for cases i do not see a win going from g1 to g2 so to buy or not to buy right now i still do not know the price but i fully expect this to just be 30 bucks 30 euros that's like not just usual price and based on that if you enjoy the noise more than the one coming from the original g1 Sure, I mean, you could also use it for cases. It's not like it's performing bad on cases. It's performing, I would say, equally on cases. The thing is just, I wouldn't exchange the existing G1s for G2s. The, of course, if the noise of the G1 is so annoying to you that you need the, the switch, do whatever you need to do. But don't expect it to perform better. It's just a different noise profile. On heat sinks and reds, definitely get the new one. Do you want the upgrade? Well. It depends on how much performance you need. But, and that's very important, do not expect this to be a ultra amazing top max performing fan. This is not a T30 3000 RPM fan. This is a hella optimized fan. Optimized for the best possible noise to performance ratio, not just raw performance. And as long as you have that expectation set properly, enjoy your new color scheme. If I were to build a new rig, I would go for the G2s just overall. Why the hell would I take the old ones? Um, also for case fans, I would take the new ones because the noise profile is um, more, I don't want to say suitable, but it doesn't annoy me as much. For heat sinks and rats, definitely G2. However, I would under no circumstances uh, rip out existing A12X25s for the new G2s. A, because on heat sinks and rats it might perform slightly better. But on, ca and in ca on cases it just doesn't. But it's just not worth the price for me because there is just a little performance uplift uh, for what you get. If I were to build a new rig, sure, different, different story. There were just two G2s all the way, but I do not see why anybody having 812X25s should get the new ones and replace the existing ones. So is it better? For the noise, you gotta judge yourself. Cases, no. Heat sinks, yes. Radiators, a bit. That's that's basically the switch from G1 to G2. And of course, build quality. I mean, it's not yet. This thing is built like a tank. Like, I, I, it's really hard to make the tips touch the frame. And I start, I need to stop because I know that it, it destroys the tip. But okay, this should be everything for the new NF-A12X25 G2. And at this point, a huge thank you to Noctia for sending these puppies over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to... Yeah, of course. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a closer look at our take on the 140mm edition of Nokia's newest second gen fan. Different form factor, different performance, maybe that one is more for you. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.